Hey, welcome back. It's Food News and Shoes Radio. Thanks for being with us this week. It's Sylvia Lovely and Jeremy Ashby. We got a, a lot of show. How you guys doing? Oh, doing great. I'm excited about this show today. We yeah. gotta find out what it looks like in the movies. You right? know, we, we talk a lot about food and cooking and eating and all about that, but one of the biggest things people do with food is taking pictures of it. I'm sure in the beginning of, of this, the Instagram culture, it must have driven chefs crazy, right? I don't, I mean, whenever people started taking food pictures on social media, I think it kind of created a whole new yeah, category. Yeah. You know, there was porn and then there was food porn. Like, literally people <laughs> just gravitated towards food pictures. I remember when Facebook came out, just posting a picture of my special every day. The interaction used yeah. to get with food what is that how do i taste yeah, it yeah. how do you make it makes it? your mouth water right it was a that. new thing yeah, yeah. And there, there are some restaurants that in the beginning didn't want people taking pictures of their food that's right it was actually pretty divisive but bill brady is on he is, you are a food photographer you are and he's on with uh, on zoom so he could be anywhere in the world taking pictures of food but you're on and you are a food a professional food photographer right bill that is correct and what tell us about that tell us yeah, about that this profession. Is like an amazing job yeah what a great job and you're out of New York City, well, right? Yeah, so I have a studio in Brooklyn, New York, in Industry City. Um, out of the, I actually work out of the Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur Tasting Room. Um, <laughs> that sounds interesting. And I've been doing uh, food photography since 2000. Um, I actually mentored with a food photographer named Bill Helms. And when he retired, I was offered his account, which was the Food Emporiums in Manhattan, which was owned by the wow. AMP brand. Wow. So I, re- I respect there, there's got to be an art and a detail uh-huh. to what you do, especially as a chef. You know, I create something and it's visually in front of me. It's my canvas. I paint it. But it seems like it, it loses luster. It loses lust even after, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it if it's just the, the, the vegetables kind of breaking their texture and colors and starting to wilt from the heat or whatever. How do you guys make it keep magical. what I do mm-hmm. looking looking nice for a cookbook or a photo shoot or a spread so it's a pretty simple answer um you got to keep all of the garnish like uh, mint or um uh, you know cilantro or whatever you have to change that out if if it dies on you if you want to make your proteins look fresh and delicious you you hit them with a paintbrush of oil and if you want to make your veg look great you spray them with a spray bottle of water Um, oh yeah oh yeah the the key to food photography is that it should remain wet if it looks dry Uh then it looks dry yeah, like his cheeseburger that well, we posted. Well, oh, I can't get a good picture ripping. of it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need Bill because, you know, they do look good, yeah. Sylvia. But to me, like, I get to see them come right off the grill. That's right. You know, and they're on the plate. And I'm like, man, this has uh, got to be the I, best, juiciest burger in town. And I think it is for a moment. How did you make um, that burger look so juicy? I mean, it was dripping juice. What made you want to just eat the picture? Well, that and honestly, that's how I define a food photograph is if you want to if you want to eat it after you look at it. Um, so I actually work with food stylists and that is a whole job unto itself where in conjunction with what I do, which is photography, lighting, composition, you know, props and all that. Um, I also hire a, something called a food stylist, which is a chef that rather than making 400 dishes in a night makes eight to ten dishes in the day but they make those look the best humanly mm-hmm. possible mm-hmm. You, so you, while i'm okay oh say so you you brought up a word you know composition uh, uh, you're a photographer and this is what you do and you you do it very well the average person who does this has no idea they 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 get a plate of food it comes in front of them they go oh boom i'm gonna take a picture and we don't really think about the lighting we don't think about right. the composition we don't think yeah. about the shadows the depth the, yeah when and that's to, what yeah. the difference between a professional and yeah. amateur is like there's so yeah. many factors yeah. Yeah. that you yeah. have to think about but what could you do to help people like me take, yeah yeah what, what, what like, advice would yeah, you give to help like people just take better <laughs> pi- using their iphone take better pictures because I, I i make them and my photos are terrible the burgers look dry they're not the lustery and you know all that yeah stuff. yeah what are some tips for okay so there's a couple of really uh simple things that you can do to make a food pictures stand out number one is light so 
if you're trying to shoot your pictures in the kitchen with no light, you know, the expression is garbage in, garbage out. Um, <laughs> what makes a photo, what makes a photograph photographic is the lighting. So believe it or not, food likes to be lit from behind. Oh, um, and then, <clears throat> yeah. So the easiest way to get your, elevate your food photographs, the, the first tip I'm going to give you is find a place either in the dining room that's near a window with natural light, or you can purchase a very inexpensive light with a soft box. Okay. A and what you want to do is you want to diffuse the light and shoot it from behind at a 45 degree angle, not directly behind so that it like flares out the lens, you know, which creates like the, a mm. weird, like look in the light. But if you shoot it from slightly above with the light, you know, at a 45 degree mm. angle, but here's the secret, you have to bounce light back into the picture. So what you need to do is get two white pieces of foam board and put them in front of the subject but so you can't see them on camera. And then you, you take the camera and you put it in between those two pieces of oh. cardboard and it bounces the light from behind oh. it, enough into the front of the photo that it gives it a texture and definition and shape from behind, but also gives you enough light in the front of the picture to see the texture of the photo. And wow. that's the simplest way to light it. You can also do something called side lighting, which is take the light and put it completely, you know, to the side of the subject. And then instead of taking your bounce cards in the front, you put your bounce card on the other side and okay. then you move it. Oh. So that's, that's oh, tip one. I tip can't two wait. is you're using the wrong lens in your camera. So the default lens in your camera is a wide angle lens which is great for shooting landscapes, which is really what the camera was designed for. Um, but now they have all these different types of lens um, equivalents inside of most smart cameras. So what you need to do is either put the camera on portrait mode, which will blur out the background, yeah. but you can't get, you can only get a certain you know, distance away with that because it'll say move further back. Um, the other thing you can do is incorporate the macro feature in your camera and put it like super close and get like just a texture. So a lot of things when, when it comes to composition is people tend to put in way too much stuff in the picture to make it interesting. So rather than showing the entire plate, for instance, um. if you zoom in and only show half the plate and then like a corner yeah. of it, and find a nice, interesting part of the dish that looks appetizing, you can zoom into that okay. and then get a really interesting food photograph. Wow. You know, <laughs> let me ask you this. How important is it for the 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 ingredients in the, the picture to be very recognizable? And I guess what I mean by that is, you know, if you zoom into a section of a dish, right, you might see a little corner of fish and maybe a little radish and some mm -hmm. pea shoot over here, right? Um, but, you know, is that, is that, does that draw the customer as much as, say, showing a whole steak, you know, or, yeah. you know what I mean? Do you yeah, have to tell a answers. story or do you, yeah. you mm -hmm. kind of do what question. you're doing, like kind of leaving little hints and, and let the, letting the mind take over? Well, for me, I think that you can do all of the above. It depends on your subject. I don't think necessarily agree with the fact that you have to show an entire plate of chicken for somebody to know that it's a plate of chicken. The goal of a food photograph is to elicit a customer into purchasing whatever it is you're selling. Oh, yeah. So in my opinion, you know, and my style of photography is I like to get up close to the subject um, and find an interesting point of view within the plate. Now, you know, of course, if I'm working with a food style, they're plating that food so that it looks good on camera. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you need to do also is recognize where the holes are in the picture and fill those with stuff. So like, let's say you're shooting a salad, right? And it looks good, but there's like a big black hole in it. Grab a crouton. Put it in the hole. Okay. You know, you don't have to show the whole thing, 
but you yeah. want to show enough of it to make it appetizing. Yeah. But not too and much to make blanks. it l- yeah. look like it, if you pull too far back, then there's no detail. And the beauty yeah. of food photography yeah. is in the detail. Oh, because yeah. Because you go, oh, my God, I want to eat that. Like you mentioned that burger shot. So that was actually a wider shot. I have the whole burger. But then I decided that it was much more interesting if I cropped into that one section. Well, pretty so, interesting to me. Yeah, it was good, so yeah. good looking. What uh, about plates? What about, uh, you know, different plates? I've always, you know, they used to say food looks best on a white plate. I always heard that when I started cooking. And then you go, well, I've seen really cool pieces of uh, wood or mm-hmm. yeah, natural, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the people Interest. play on rocks. or Bowls. What, what, what about that yeah. sort of uh that aspect of it so the answer to that question is whatever is aesthetically pleasing and complements the dish whether it's a piece of slate a cutting board a dish on top of a cutting board um, it doesn't matter as long as the tones match the subject you know if you have a again i'm sorry Oh, and I was going to say in the photography sense, I think, you know, those kind of presentation pieces really make things pop. Yeah. But from the eater standpoint, something that always looks good on a slate plate or in a cast iron skillet, if you ever really sat down to eat those, like scraping a fork and knife in a little cast iron skillet sure. is texturally kind of the same right. thing as grating your nails against of a chalkboard, yeah. you know, or slate. So there is a difference between what looks good and, and what, what actually is actually feels practical. Good. Yeah. That's right. Well, listen, you know, people are sophisticated enough at this point, hopefully, that a literal interpretation of what you see and is and what you get. So if you want, my advice, if you're shooting, especially for a restaurant, is if you want to do representational dishes in a traditional manner, shoot those in their entirety on white plates, either straight overhead or do something interesting with the camera. Let to me, make it interesting. Let me ask you. However, a sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Well, do you ever include people in your photographs? Is there On like, occasion. like what? When would you say put somebody in the picture, and does that make a difference? It's just depending on what the client wants, or do you have suggestions about that? I I like people in pictures, but some people yeah, like so- just juicy hamburgers. So that's a lifestyle shot. And yes, I do do those as well. Um, if you look on my website, there's a section called lifestyle. So my goal is to sell a product. So for instance, there's a bunch of pictures of an upstate vodka campaign that I did. Now, there's people in the shot, but they're slightly out of focus. And the vodka is the, the main event. So while it's okay to put people in photographs, it all depends on the client, what the look and feel is. So when I work, I get a something called a creative brief. And I, I literally just got off of a, 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 a pre-production meeting about a menu items that I'm shooting for Golden Crust, which is a Jamaican patty company. And we went over all of the looks, the feels, the objectives. Uh-huh. So know their story. I work with teams yeah. and usually they come up with the creative and it, as a commercial photographer it's my job to execute their vision so if they want pictures with people in the background then we, then we give them those yeah. if they want straight up food porn then that's what they get sometimes they get a combination of the two it all depends on what they want and what their end goal yeah, is yeah and then you put the creative piece to it of this is how it would look really good and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. If that's not their expertise, what they want in their story is what you interpret then as the art. <clears throat> and the skill. Right. Yeah, my job is to execute a client's creative vision to the best of my technical and creative ability. So there's and, a, you know, I'll keep interrupting. I'm sorry, but there's a lot to this. I want to, I have a question about these stylists, these food stylists. It, it seems, how many dishes do they go through on a typical shoot? Because I, I've yeah. seen a couple of these things go down. You get a plate in there with the, 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 the way you like to do it. The lighting can be, those are like heat lamps, right? Yeah. So you, it's yeah. a limited amount of time that food's going to look good. And so they have to like plate these several times and keep getting tons of shots. How many times do you think that has to be done in one shoot? So I, I generally don't 
um, have multiple dishes of the same item. Um, because we shoot digitally now, the yeah. lights, they're not hot, actually. They're, cool. We either use strobes, oh. which have modeling lights, which aren't hot, or I use, these days I'm using continuous light because I also shoot video at the same time. So the lights are, they give out a minimal amount of heat. Um, it's just time. So I like to explain to people that food photography is a still life with an expiration date. So you have to move fast. But when I first started shooting, when we were shooting on film, we would work on two shots in a day. Today, we can do 10, 15 shots, you know, set, you know, depending on the complexity of the dish and still maintain a high level of output um, and, and, you know, productivity because the, 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 the medium is faster now. Sure. So if, if things start to die on set, we can bring them back to life by adding more oil water, like paint yeah, yeah. or water. Uh-huh. Uh, get water beads, and sometimes you mix um, in a little bottle a glycerin and water mixture will create those beads like gone in glass. Um, and there's a whole art to food styling. And I actually know 90% of the tricks, and I can style food pretty well. But to get the most return on your investment with a food photographer, mm-hmm. if they're working with a stylist, the stylist is styling while the photographer's shooting. And when something's on set, I can't be cooking food to, to, to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know I, was ho- so, I was hoping what you'd yeah. say is that um, that they did, the food did wear out, and then I could get a job as the eater <laughs> when the food is, oh, no, no, can't photograph never, it anymore. Pass it over eat, to Sylvia. She's being paid. Never to eat, eat anything food. on set. Because <laughs> there's some other tricks of the trade out there too, right? Uh, I remember like one time when I first got out of culinary school, it was one of our first magazines. For, I don't know what I'm doing. I was like using a hairspray and stuff yeah, to make I've things. Heard of that. I mean, it's not edible, of course, but well, mm-hmm. ice cream is generally Crisco. Is that yeah, right? I always heard that. <laughs> oh like, certain gosh. things are, yeah, certain things look like you know. Si- they were saying, uh, for instance, syrup looks awful in real life. So motor oil is usually oh what's what, because it just it, it stands. Uh, I just quit my job. So yeah, because I've and you know I, I know that's more in the food stylist realm, but so uh, syrup absorbs into a pancake really fast, but motor oil will sit on top of it and give you that look that you want, that unctuousness that you just can't get. Now there are certain rules when you're you're certain ways you're not allowed to and I don't know what all the rules are but I know for certain things you cannot use inedible objects in food photography is that right oh fascinating when you're going to use it for certain packaging I believe I I, I mean it's probably more of a of a law thing but I don't know if that that's something you've run across yeah Bill yeah so the rule of thumb the rule of thumb is first of all if it's on set don't eat it unless you're shooting (laughs) in a restaurant (laughs) yeah I just quit my job yeah So I I just have a very brief anecdote. We were shooting for OTG, which is the the airport service company. And the guy, one of the guys grabbed the muffin off the set and started eating it. And he bit into a giant, um, you know, toothpick spike. Oh, my gosh. And the chef freaked out. He's like, oh, my God, he starts making phone calls. And we're like dude, like we did that. We put that in there so that the muffin would yeah. sit at a specific angle. Oh, don't eat anything that gosh. comes off of the set. You know, we don't know. You don't know if we put a chemical on that <laughs> or there's pins. You, most likely there's pins in the food, especially for um, sandwiches. Like when we do work for boar's head, you roll the meat and then you stick a pin in it yeah. so that it doesn't unroll. So don't eat anything off. Okay, upset. good rule. That's, 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 <laughs> that's so funny. The chef's all, he's making phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in terms of the motor oil, like, yes, they do use motor oil. But to answer the, your question, it, if you're shooting a product like haagen ice cream, you have to use haagen ice cream. Oh, if you're oh, shooting yeah, cereal okay. and, like, if you're shooting package design stuff, um, we were shooting stuff for Walmart and we had to – you can take 10 packages of frozen food. And what you have to do is you have to weigh out the ingredients that come out. So let's say there's three ounces of peas, you know, 10 shrimp, blah, blah, blah. If you take those packages apart and weigh out the the, the ingredients, sift through them and add them back in, like let's say 
package number five has better shrimp than package number two, but package number two has better peas. As long as you're combining the okay. same amount of ounces or oh, number of counts, so of you're course. not overselling something, no, that's the, true. the key is you, you don't want to misinterpret what the product is. Yeah, your customers might want to count those peas. Yeah, it's got it's got a... <laughs> No, they do. They do. Yeah. It's oh weird. man. <laughs> on, on one last note, because we we got to wrap up with Bill Brady. Bill Brady yeah. Photography. Uh, thank you so much for being on here. Informative. It, yeah, really informative. I and also, loved it. There's there's a reason why the hamburger you get at the drive thru never looks as good as the hamburger that's in the picture at the drive thru when you order it. But yours tastes yeah. better than. But yours tastes better. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no no pins in it. Yeah. Uh, Bill, <laughs> thank you so much thank for being you, on Bill. with us today. We'll have you back. This is fascinating. No problem. Appreciate I'm it. Happy to come on. All okay. right. Thank back you. Back in a moment with, with Callie from the Foodies Remo- Reviewing Movies podcast. Next, it's Food News and Choose Radio. Uh, Welcome back. It's Food <laughs> News and Choose Radio. Now for part two yeah. of talking about food styling with someone who we don't talk about food photography or food styling with, but last time she came on, we talked about a lot of things, including Cocaine Bear. It's Callie Matthews yeah. of Food is Reviewing Movies. Foodie. I love this. And I it, just love this It's a this podcast, podcast that you should listen to. How are you doing, <laughs> Callie? You. I'm doing well. Appreciate I, it. I think that's brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Thank that you, you came up with such a thing because foodies time. and movies... You know, expands mm-hmm. beyond, beyond that big tub of popcorn and a 100%. large Coke. I think and, you're talking you know. about just modern lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a lifestyle And you podcast. don't pay exactly. attention to the movies, the food in movies, as mm-hmm. much as, you know, <laughs> Callie will show you yeah. some of the things that are going on And, and there's a lot of really interesting stuff. I mean, sometimes, you know, if you're like a connoisseur, you may, you know, think that like the menu or ratatouille, they're like, you know, godsend kind of thing. And then maybe you just don't pay attention as much, you know. That so. animated ratatouille. A Tui presentation that he pulled off in the end was pretty impressive. It was. You know, like that classic <laughs> where you, you know, like layer the the batons or just of of We're squash just, and zucchini. Like you could and, never do that in a real. Ra- Although, have you ever seen people? I have do, done that. Have you done it in real life? People <laughs> used to make me do that. <laughs> there, there are uh, there are like YouTube pages where people will show you how to make. Mm. Ratatouille, the way it's made in the movie. And it's it a process. Like, yeah, it takes like seven hours. It's yeah. so fun. All right, real fast, before we move on, what is, do you guys have a favorite food scene in a non food movie? So mm. I know you. In a non food oh, okay. yeah. yeah, so, movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a non food movie. Because, you know, there's yeah, a lot of great, movies, there's a lot yeah. of great food movies yep, yep, out yep. there. Mm-hmm. But well, not every movie can be a food movie, but a lot of great non food movies okay, have great well, food about, scenes. Well, how about The Godfather? Yeah. Oh yeah! I mean, All yeah. those scenes, those you know, you know, somebody's about to be whacked, <laughs> but they're sitting there, mm-hmm. and you know, they're in some Italian little bistro somewhere, mm-hmm. and you know they're going to get whacked. But you're letting you're off on the food, you know. Same thing, Goodfellas, where they're slicing <laughs> yeah. the garlic and they're doing oh, yeah. it in prison. They're using yeah. the razor yeah, blade, whole, like because it, it's like it's going from the mafia story. Then it's like, oh, here's a little subset, you know. And, right. and when you're making the sauce, slice the garlic thin so it. You know, dissolves completely in the Which sauce. is good advice. It's very good. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. They can use the yeah. knife, but they usually use a gun, right? Well, yeah. they're using a razor blade because they're in prison. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. They can get canned tomatoes and razors. Do you, do you have a, a favorite non movie food scene? Okay. Yeah, so I actually was going to bring these up anyways when talking today. So perfect timing. Oh, right. uh, right. The movie Hook, when they're having the bang rang and they're fighting with the food. Yeah, what is that stuff? Who, so, uh, who I want it. Yeah, Whatever that right? creamy, fluffy drink is they get to have. Uh, oh. Yes, and it leaves that nice little mustache on your face. Face. Mm-hmm. It's almost like butterbeer from Harry Potter. Yeah, pretty it has the much, same feel. Harry Potter was the other one, the Great oh. Hall scene. Yeah, yeah. So those are sort of like, like that one in particular is one I did want to sort of touch on today because you're sitting there going, "Man, that looks tantalizing. I want to eat this food." That was the best part of the magic yeah. for me. It's like yes. they were sitting at a table, and it was like being at the highest class Golden Corral you've ever yeah. been to. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just a buffet of anything you want. That's hard to imagine that I'm right. going yeah. there. I was okay. thinking about this, Sylvia, because we talk. We've talked about the Godfather before on the big food spreads, yeah. right? And I'm thinking back now, and back then, you know, it was like, "Wow, I wonder what all that good stuff is." Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. It doesn't really look, uh, things have changed over time. Yeah. That would yeah. not be a spread that a modern day food photographer would probably shoot. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't really picture what anything really, you know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. the, the visible things in the Harry Potter scene, the big banquet tables. All I guess is like food photography has changed or, or what oh, we Everything's more vivid imagine. now. Imagine, yeah. yeah, vivid. That's yeah, the word. Everything more, more vividly painted. It used to be like, you know, Italian food, especially like in the 70s, Red. it's all covered in sauce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just covered in sauce. Yeah, is that a meatball? Right, right, right. Yeah. But maybe that was more realistic. 
Okay, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean there that's... is a lot of sauce. You know, my mom grew up in New York where there was a bunch of Italians, you know, in the neighborhood, and it was just all sauce. So yeah, let's no, start yeah. with your mother's sauce recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about her. the podcast, though. Tell us yes. what you do with your, because you go, like, to places mm-hmm. with groups, right? Are yeah. that, is that how yeah. it's set up? So um, you can find us at FRM Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Last time I forgot to do that, so I'm throwing that out right now. And uh, pretty much we go through and we will eat at a restaurant and then we will review a movie. We do not do those, like, together in the same place. Not yet. Not yet, <laughs> right. I, I mean, it probably will change at some point. The yeah. dream is to actually go to, like, one of those places where, like, they shot The Godfather and, like, yeah. do the review oh, yeah. of The Godfather in, you know, the restaurant. Oh, that yeah. would be so awesome. But, yeah, so pretty much I, I love supporting local businesses. That is a main goal that I have. And then I just love talking about food and movies. So let's go. Let's How do you get there. on your invitation list? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's go, Sylvia. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like it could be a subscription club. Right, you know, yeah. this month we're yeah. going to review yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. maybe yeah. a business opportunity yeah. here, Callie. Okay, so we're copywriting this. This uh, is take now my money. a little seed, and <laughs> it's ours. So if anyone steals it, but yeah, it's just a great time, and it was an excuse during COVID to get together with friends in a safe manner, and so sure. that's sort of how it was born. So. Huh. But yeah. so, so tell us more about uh, about movies and, and some yeah. things that are going on out there and and food photography because we you know mm-hmm. I know you know Bill Brady yes a, a yes. whole lot and he's so cool yes so in Bill's half I wanted to just mention before I forget Twitch mentioned um, that like sometimes for ice cream they may use Crisco mm-hmm. they also use mashed taters really oh, yeah, yes. that's a good one they dye taters. them and then like if you see you know a bunch of layers on a cone for example one hundred percent mashed potatoes really yes you know that would make sense because even on the edges where the the you can kind of zoom in and see where the ice cream has got a little section that's away from the big one it mm-hmm. holds together it has a little fluff to it mm-hmm. yes. mashed potatoes would do that as yeah. well and that's well, the only thing that would work probably. and it's the only other food that's served in an ice cream scoop in cafeterias is yeah. mashed potatoes well true so that makes complete mm-hmm. yeah. sense so that was one little fun thing i was like oh I didn't know that. They also use mashed potatoes to make turkeys look bigger and inflate them a bit. How? Yeah, they just like get like a little them? syringe kind of thing, and they just push the mashed potatoes in there to inflate it a inflate bit more. It Probably it under the skin. Yes. Yeah, yes. like in between the and meat make just to plump fat. it up. Mm-hmm. And that make is it bizarre. Look so and I am also pumped up with mashed potatoes <laughs> yeah. on the inside. Yeah, I yeah no, I think I could actually <laughs> do this. How do you choose your movies? Yeah. How do I choose my movies? Well, I really just, it depends on what ones are you know like popular at that time what do you do like current movies or do do you go back in time i do past i know at some point i'm going to be doing a silent film so that will be really fun to do um i mean oh interesting i've done you know classics like we talked about last time i was here uh evil dead um you know we've done uh heavyweights was the first one that we ever did which was a disney film about some kids going to a fat camp that ben stiller had started and he's a little bit of a maniac and so that one has a lot of food in it so it felt sort of appropriate to have that as the first episode. Do you look for funny movies or oh, humor or serious? Oh, yeah. you know. All of the above. I mean, Harry Met Sally, that's one that's just a nice perfect little cornucopia that we had for Valentine's Day. So oh, sure. yeah, I try and do sometimes based on what time of year they're coming out as well. Now, one of your last podcasts was it was uh, Food Feuds of the Bluegrass. Right? Yes. Now that wasn't based on a movie. No, that oh, was. Do uh, tell us more. Yeah, explain yes. that. So I have actually two episodes that drop a week one is like the main review and then one may just be news of like current events or mm-hmm. things happening i'm sure y'all are familiar with cheesecake gate that yes. happened oh yeah that's uh-huh. what it was it was the retelling of everything that went down between that and the tater tot wars this, so tater, tater, tater tot, tot wars. wars yeah that was uh, another <laughs> that was a like, joke though yeah, but we actually had so in this studio we had the guys from uh, mm-hmm. CCI and Chevy and uh, um, uh, Charlie Charlie yeah. Browns, thank yeah. you, come in here and we mediated peace talks with them. Mm-hmm. Oh, to, to, funny. yeah, because you know it was it was How tearing funny. apart yeah. Chevy Chase. It really is. Now the cheesecake thing is almost like a mini COVID where we'll all remember our summer yes. of cheesecake. <laughs> Because that, that took over the, for three days. Nothing in Lexington happened that wasn't cheesecake related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It oh, was God. insane. Yeah. So I just went through a friend of mine that you all have met, James from 13th Floor. Oh, yeah. He was actually in Aruba 
when this all broke out. Oh. And then he saw it on Reddit, and he's like, what is going on in Lexington? So it, oh, so it kind of got bigger than Lexington? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was on Reddit. It was all over Facebook. I mean, people were just going nuts about it. It, it was <laughs> nice to have something to focus on that wasn't of much consequence, yeah, but yeah, everybody kind of Every got once it. in a while, we need that as just yeah, sort of an outlet. You know? Everyone sort of got yeah. in on the joke mm-hmm. of it and, and uh, enjoy the... Because it was absurd. Yeah. The whole situation. The whole What's your most favorite out. one Absurd. that you've ever done? Your most My favorite, favorite episode? movie, movie, your favorite episode. Oh, yeah. gosh. It's hard because, like, after a while, you start to forget what you've done, which is yeah, I know. <laughs> It's just like, wait, what did I say that one time? Hey, they said it's not a big deal if you forget where your keys are. It is if you forgot what you did this morning. Right. <laughs> well, it's bad if you forget where your car is. Yeah. That's the yeah. I think uh, The Thing was a really fun one because I had actually not seen it prior to reviewing it with James. The newer thing or the older thing? The old thing? one. The first yeah, one. Great. Which one? Yeah. The Thing. The that Thing. came out back in like the 80s. And, right. Yeah. It was just, it was a lot to, fun to talk about with science and moving even just past the movie as well and talking about aliens. I mean, that was great. It just released um, The Tomorrow War, which yeah. that was a really fun movie to watch and a really fun movie to talk about. So so I've seen that movie. That was an Amazon movie with Chris Pratt. Yes. So I've seen the movie, but I don't remember much food. So mm-hmm. did you like attack it from a food perspective? We did in some ways. Well, I mean, the people are food in that movie because well, yeah, of the yeah, aliens. Yeah, yeah. But, um... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we t- okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, we but were the food. There you go. We didn't eat people. So um, we talked about in the movie, they have like lasagna, like, you know, meal ready lasagna. And mm-hmm. so we actually paired it with Pasta Garage. Oh, okay. And we ate my friend Kenny's favorite meal, which is chicken parmesan. And it was sort of like that whole, what would your last meal be mm. kind of circumstance? Okay. What meal would what you meal do you most? eat before you become a meal? Exactly. <laughs> so what's going to plump you up for the aliens? Yeah. But yeah, so we sort of did it that way. And then there's like a Christmas party in the beginning. So that was also where we could sort of talk a little bit about party food as well. Have you guys planned out a last meal? Like if you were on death row and you had to do that thing where... You know, oh, point man. out your meal. Have you figured out what, what it would uh, No, I figured it'd be the last menu I write, though. <laughs> it'd be pizza, fried chicken, <clears throat> or oh. a hamburger, a big old juicy. Good old and I'd American eat the whole pie. thing instead of just half. Yeah. Mm. Gotcha. My my friend Brandy just made this like it's been stuck on my mind and I'm like please just make this again for me lasagna. It oh, was I love like the, lasagna. probably the best lasagna I've had and the garlic bread. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what she did. Yeah. But it was amazing. I know, and you Magic. just eat too much and yeah. it just tastes so good. She, it was so healthy. guys, <laughs> what movie throughout history has the best looking pizza? Because oh. you know it's a highly mm-hmm. shot. Item and yes. it's something that people kind of seem to have in and out of pizza. What Saturday being delivered? Fever. Saturday Night Fever. John Travolta walking down the street eating a eating slice of pizza. pizza. Mm. Also, along came Polly. There's a scene where, oh, what's his name? Uh, ben Stiller has to wipe down the oil from the pizza, and yeah. the other guy po- just pours the oil in his mouth. And that one looked good. Those are my two pizza. <laughs> Those are my, oh, yeah. He's like, "What are you wiping that off for?" And he starts drinking the oil off of his pizza. <laughs> my man. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Do you know what makes it look so like glisteny for the pepperonis, for example? Mm. They what? just get like olive oil and brush it on there. They brush yeah. it on the crust so that way it looks nice and glisteny. Oh, and it would taste good too, except yeah. except I think you're not supposed to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> because you never know, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's going to be in there? <laughs> you know you've seen a lot of pizza. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You're trying to think of it. I am you? because you're like, well, first off, is it a pan pizza? Is it a New York right, style Right, because I think a right. pan pizza Sicilian style Detroit style, what do you want to call it? Right. Kind of looks more... I don't know, appealing sometimes. It does. But then it photographs. Better. But then a big old floppy New York style is irresistible as well. Yeah. yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. I feel like I gravitate toward the New York more. <laughs> I do too. You know, just big old slice, just flopping in the wind. You know? But there's yeah. something yeah. about uh, okay. So the 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 Chicago style gives you that cinematic cheese pull. When you sl- yeah. cut which the is, slice yes, and you pull it cheese out of the pan, pull. There's something yeah, you get the that cheese, cheese pull from it, which right. makes it visually oh, more appealing. Yeah, That's Kelly, true. have you ever taken up a movie that is centered upon food? Oh yeah, we uh, actually have recorded the menu, which okay. we haven't released that yet. But that one, I mean, that whole entire movie is solely based upon a very rich type of extravagant meal so that one is is definitely one of our main ones that's focused on food for sure that's going to be coming out this uh, upcoming season so how many episodes ahead do you try to have oh god because this well, is time intensive i right? have i actually just took a break for a little while because i've been overstretching myself and everyone needs a break every yeah, once in a while so i now actually have my whole entire next season completely recorded oh so i just have to edit it so 
<laughs> so the timing worked nice. And it Is comes there a time out once. Where you you yeah. make a, 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 a an episode based on a food that you don't like. Um. Yeah. I mean. So. Okay. We're going to be doing uh, Dumb and Dumber, a couple of friends and I. Oh, and I love that movie. I, my dream is to do hot ones. I would love to do it, but my body will hate me. Mm. And so I, I like spicy food, but I don't at the same time. Oh. I'm going to be eating spicy like da bomb sauce hot and i'm not excited but that's you know, a great scene time. in that movie that is a great <laughs> exactly. scene in that movie do y'all i'm yeah. a, i'm a devotee of dumb and dumber mm-hmm. the it's first one of my, one. it's one of my favorite i, I love that. that it's one of my favorite movies love i love it <laughs> i love that movie really? I got, my kids can recite that movie i mean and then the middle part in that diner mm-hmm. where you know he's eating the hot and they're yeah, like they put the, they're the giving him rat yeah. points <laughs> Pills are good. Pills are no. good. That's one of my favorite things, too. I love it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I'm willing to try stuff. You know, if there's bugs that are being eaten in a movie, okay. Like, uh, let's try it. You know, if it's covered in chocolate, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'll try ants. Hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. So there, there's plenty of bug-eating movies. we got, we got to put oh, on yeah. the spot on that. Indiana Jones, right? Uh, mm-hmm. There was a Nick Cage, Kiss of the, I think it was Kiss of the Van. It was the Nick Cage vampire movie where he insisted oh, okay. methodically. That, the new one? The old one, but it was one of his first movies, and he wanted to eat the roaches in real life oh. because oh he was like, gosh. I'm a method actor, so I'm going to do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, Come on, Nick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You find out real fast, if you are allergic to, to shellfish, you can also not eat cockroaches. So tell, tell no, me No, seriously. Like the, the well, the next time I'll watch what? that. Is the shell like the same kind of... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exoskeleton. Yeah, exoskeleton. Yeah, it's it's exoskeleton. yeah, if you're allergic yeah. to one, you, yeah. you'll get, be allergic to the other. Well, I've been cutting back on exoskeletons okay. lately, so I... I think I'll yeah. be okay. Yeah. And don't eat cockroaches. <laughs> That's yeah. one I want. Yeah, and eat. Jeremy, don't you put stuff in the food that don't I don't know about because he lies to me a lot because I <laughs> well, have, like this very strict. Sylvia's job. had so many chicken veals, she doesn't even. <laughs> she don't even know. I won't eat veal, won't eat lamb, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> won't eat venison. You've had plenty of hamburger they and have big eyes. And, she doesn't know. Big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> big eyes. Although cows do right. too, you know, and I eat hamburgers. I love oh. hamburgers. Well, I have, I have a fun game. Okay. Because it's like we've just been talking with Bill about these awesome sort of tricks that they're using and so uh just a little quick game with you we have some pictures here the first one i'm going to show you is some enchiladas okay Okay. so what do you think actually makes it have more of like a bigger plumpier kind of filled appearance are those are those hand towels (laughs) <laughs> that, would up. Actually, that would be interesting. It's not. This one is actually mashed potatoes as well. Is mashed potatoes the answer oh, yeah. to every question? No, it's not. It should be, though. <laughs> but so you what can I, guess it if you well, want. Well, you know what? Enchiladas <laughs> never look like that. What's the right. contest? They never look like that. Um, well, that's I'm how it works in the kitchen. One. I'm like, just that doesn't look right. I'm like, slap some mashed potatoes. He's <laughs> actually making it, like, you know, Making it really example, special. For example, what makes this look a little more, you know, like, it's keeping it open. So it's like a taco fajita kind of thing. That has a little a little army man holding the Taco shell up inside. That's of it. you need to do these because is your little, are way better. It's a little chunk of like beef in there or something. Yeah, there's a there's little chunk beef and stuff. So what's holding this up is actually cosmetic sponges that are placed <laughs> behind the beef. And then what I was going to say mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to. Yeah, you I was going to say, keep saying mashed potatoes is going to be right. Yeah, and so what they'll do too so with two for one? these tacos is they'll mm-hmm. actually spray them with like WD forty. And then also do like a, uh, you know, so that way it like looks like it's glistened. And instead of using tomatoes, they'll use like more of a roasted red pepper and throw that in there to make the tomatoes look more vibrant. That makes sense. Red peppers yes. are prettier tomatoes than tomatoes. Yes. You know, maybe this is just technology, you know, how we're kind of, kind of combining non-food and food ingredients right. together, you know. Maybe mm-hmm. this is where the world's AI. coming well, to. That's how we'll eat. Oh, yeah. no, seriously. <laughs> now, we talked a little bit about the cereal, and I think you might get this one right, Twitch. Okay. So, cereal, what makes it not get all smushy during I know this a photo one. shoot? Okay. All right. What is it? What, right? what I think yeah. I'm right. I think okay, I'm right. It's ahead. Elmer's glue, right? Definitely glue is used. Also, you mean cream the and milk is glue? Lotion oh, can wow. Be used. So, yeah. I prefer suntan lotion. Yeah. So, that's what it's sitting coconut. in yes. as opposed to milk. That way it keeps it it's buoyant and it yeah. keeps it from getting all soggy. nasty and soggy because who and, looks soggy? And the cereal sits on top of it as opposed yes. to sinking. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they sort of just very nice strategically place the berries in there with the, you know, this one we're looking at has almond slices in it and all that. 
And then our last one I thought would be really fun. A cup of coffee you may see, for example, in a, uh, you know, a coffee mm-hmm. commercial. Sure. Like partially mixed. Yeah, we're yeah. You know, partially we're mixed. So it's got to be dispersed. something that kind of holds it. that milk in and, and you're seeing it sort of, you know, go through and mix yeah. together, sort of do this nice little dance. So uh, that is actually watered down soy sauce and gelatin <laughs> <laughs> and so that way it makes it sort of more loose and moving because if you put milk in with it it's just going to separate yeah sure. and you have to keep doing it over yeah. and over again so yeah i mean and who wants soy sauce and milk right <laughs> so you know no one's gonna drink that that sounds awful that sounds awful no, yeah man. check out the foodies reviewing movies podcast f m FRM? Yes, FRM podcast on uh, any kind of social media okay. you can and get. Go check them out on Instagram and all that. And obviously, uh, click through our Facebook page and you'll see them there. Callie, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. Appreciate it. It was it. fun. Always Back fun. Back in a bit. It's Food News and Shoes Radio. Side on 